As the Cavs go into this coming season, there's a very small silver lining for LeBron James and the defending Eastern Conference champion. They should be used to having bumps in their road by now. Remember, last June, they lose to the Warriors in the finals with no Kyrie Irving after the first game, no Kevin Love, no Iman Shumpert. Kyrie says during the summer that he thinks the Cavs would have beaten the Warriors if they were fully healthy. But we're not going to see that anytime soon. Kyrie is not expected to be there at the beginning of the regular season. Kevin Love should be there, but that shoulder is still on the mend. Tristan Thompson is not part of this team right now. He's holding out, unhappy with his contract. Yet again, LeBron is going to have to carry a serious load. This is not the way the Cavs wanted their season to start. Paul George's comeback controversy is going to be something to keep an eye on all season long. The Pacers star not thrilled that he's being used as a power forward as opposed to the small forward spot that he's played his entire life. Paul, and I can't say that I blame him, is not happy. Feels like he'll be overmatched defensively, and when it comes to health concerns, who can blame a guy who's been through what he's been through for having a few worries here? We knew the Miami Heat would never be the same once LeBron James left town and went back to Cleveland, but that does not mean that it's time to forget about the guys he left behind. The Heat went 37 and 45 last season. I do not think it was indicative of what this group can do. Dwayne Wade only played 62 games. Chris Bosh with that blood clot in his lungs only played 44 games. Goran Dragic comes back for a second season with this group. Hassan Whiteside, the breakout player of last season in the entire NBA. Luol Deng re-signed as well. There's a lot of talent with this group. I think they're going to make some noise even without LeBron. On paper, LaMarcus Aldridge and the Spurs are a perfect fit, I think, in the minds of many, the front runners for the title. But as he told me back in July, even he had questions about this marriage as he went through the free agency process, specifically how it would work on the offensive end. The Spurs are known to balance out their scoring, have a very equitable system. LaMarcus, on most nights as a volume shooter, likes to put up big time numbers. This is a good problem to have. The Spurs are going to be very good, but there's going to be plenty to watch here. Anthony Davis has gone from being a breakout star to a top five NBA talent in nothing flat. Now this season, we'll see if he can take the New Orleans Pelicans to the next level. He's going to have to do it with a new coach. Alvin Gentry was the associate head coach for the Warriors last year with the reigning champion side by side with Steve Kerr. And he's hopeful that he can take that offense to the next level, make even better use of Anthony after he was in the running for MVP last year. Kobe Bryant and the Lakers may wind up being one of the worst teams in the NBA, but they are still worth watching, not only to see if this is in fact Kobe's final year, but to see if he can stay healthy, if he can have a positive impact on the young players of that team. The Lakers need their young players to take a serious step up as they go into next summer. D'Angelo Russell, Julius Randle, Jordan Clarkson, if those guys are exciting enough, impactful enough, the Lakers are hopeful that next summer, maybe finally some of those big time free agents come their way.